Just a, a while ago, about a week or so ago, um, when I finished my volume one of the dolls, um, I showed you the volume that I created, or the book that I created, with the flexible fabric spine that lays flat that I was going to use for my limited volume two. So this was a small journal which is four inches by six inches in size. When opened out gives a nice size of eight inches by six inches in which to create another kind of um, paper doll art journal page on. And I only put uh, enough to do ten double page spreads in this little book. Now a lot of you um, commented and sent emails asking me whether I would show you how I created the book with the flexible spine that enables it to lay flat and I promised that I would do. So today I'm going to show you how I created this journal from scratch. So that's what we're going to do next. So I'll go away and get all bits and pieces that I need to create another one and then I'll be right back. Okay, so I've assembled all the pieces that you're going to need. So I'll go through each one individually. So we'll start off with the covers. So I have two pieces of grey grunge board cut to four inches by six inches. If you don't have any grey grunge board um, that you can purloin from either the store or from the back of an old um, watercolour cardstock pad or something or even a, just a, a bog standard writing pad the grey grunge board on the back of those works pretty well. You can if you want to just use some thick card from packaging. So this is just some cardboard I've taken from some dog biscuits um, Mr Bentley's um, dog biscuits. So it will it's not quite as thick as the grey grunge board but will work just as well if you're working on a budget or you can't get hold of that grey grunge board because of supply problems or lockdown or whatever. If you're quarantined and haven't and can't go out, then look in your cupboards. You could always, if you want to make it thicker, glue two pieces together to give you that thicker cardstock if you need to. But that's just you know another option if you haven't got any of that grey grunge board. The other thing that I've got are two pieces of cardstock, just bulk standard card making cardstock. It doesn't have to be really heavy, it, doesn't ha it can just be paper. Just something which gives a little bit of a contrast to the inside of your journal. The one that I used for my journal was black paper. But you can put a nice colour one in. I'm going to put yellow on the inside of this one. I use black on that. I'm going to use yellow for the one that I'm going to show you how to use today, or how to create today. The other thing that I've got are 10 pieces of watercolour cardstock or mixed media cardstock. Just the sort of thing you get in a journal. Thickness is entirely up to you. Whatever you want to use, if you want to use thicker, you can use thicker. If you want to use slightly thinner, you can use slightly thinner. It's entirely what you want to put into your journal. Um, but bear in mind, we are going to be sticking these together. So whatever you do, it's going to be double the thickness. I know. Right, so these are cut at 8 inches by 6 inches and then scored down the middle at 4 inches. Now I'm working in Imperial because regardless of where you are in the world you can understand Imperial. So when folded it's going to give you the 4 inches by 6 inches. I don't think I can make it any clearer than that. And I've got 10 sheets and that's all I'm going to show you how to put in today. I'm just going to duplicate or try and show you what I did to create this one. So those are the 10 sheets. You also will need a piece of fabric. Cut, doesn't matter how wide it is, as long as it's the same height as your book. So I've just got a piece of Tim Holtz cotton fabric from my stash and that will do. Like I said, it doesn't matter how wide it is, as long as it's worn one of the dimensions, it's about the same as the paper, which is six inches. And the reason it doesn't matter is because this will be folded around the card. 
are folded around your paper at some point. Okay, so we've got that, we've got that, we've got that. The next thing are your cover decorations. So you will need for this a piece of patterned paper or if you want you can just paint these if you want to you don't have to cover them in paper now I've cut these at um, an inch wider and an inch taller so this is eight by six so that when I wrap these round I'm going to have a nice inch border all the way around on the inside which you won't see but that's just the dimensions that I've done just to make sure that I've got a nice wrap around for the paper and for ease I've actually added some sticky uh, double-sided sticky onto the back of my paper rather than glue but if you haven't got any double-sided tape you want to use glue then just bog standard white PVA will do or any other kind of spirit glue that you use for card making or scrapbooking will work just as well you'll just have to make sure you put some on the back on the grey grunge board and some on the paper but we'll get to that in a little while the first thing you need to do is to create your block of your paper and this is the quickest and easiest and simplest way in which to do this so you just take one piece of paper which is going to be your bottom sheet and then you want another so opening on the left one opening on the right take your glue and I'm just going to use bog standard white PVA Run a bead on the outside and down the middle and if you want to put a little bit in the middle you can do and then fold that over matching up the spines and then lay it flat. You've then got that and you want to repeat that until you've stuck together all 10 of your sheets. So I'll take the next one, add your glue, and I'll do it one more time, just so you can see what I'm doing. And then I'll skip to where I've done all of them line your spine up, stick it down. I'll do it one more time. Okay, I will speed through so you can now see you're starting to form your book block and it doesn't really matter whether the pages are stuck perfectly or not as long as they're stuck together in a block. So I will speed through gluing the rest of these down and I will join with you back in real time at the end. Okay, that's all 10 stuck together. So what you can do now is you can either lay something heavy on the top and leave it for an hour or so, or you can get a couple of clamps, grab your outer card stocks, a couple of bulldog clips that are wide enough And that will help just to hold them in place until they're pretty much dry. So give them a good five to ten minutes. So I will do that, leave them for about five to ten minutes and then I'll come back. But 
But just for speed on this, to show you, I'll actually just put them to one side and I'll start work on the front covers. So I've got my two front covers, I've got my paper that I've chosen for my covers, and like I said, I have added some um, double-sided sticky tape just onto the back, or double-sided sheet onto the back. I'm just going to give it a quick rub, just to make sure that the adhesive has stuck. But like I said before, if you haven't got anything like this, or don't want to use tape, you'd prefer to do something a bit more permanent, then by all means, you can use PVA glue, just like we have done in the past. Okay, so let's just take that covering off. Normally this comes off a lot easier. There we go. Make sure I've got it the right way up. But to be honest, it doesn't matter at this stage. <laughs> because you can always turn it around. Okay, so I'm just going to drop that down somewhere in the middle. Like that. So that's gonna become our cover. Now, I want to create a kind of mitre across the corner. So I'm just gonna grab a little cutting board. Now you can either, with a ruler, or a knife, we could just do it freehand if you're feeling very, very brave. Just snip off those corners. So I'm leaving, what would you say, about an eighth of an inch, maybe a little bit more from the corner. And like I said, it doesn't matter if you're, you know, a total 100% accurate on this. Because this side is actually going to get covered up anyway. So, and you don't necessarily have to leave as much as I have on either side. That's just the way that I prefer to do it. And as people have asked me how I did mine, I'm only being polite by showing you how I do it. Okay, so we've got that kind of shape now. So those corners cut off. All I'm going to do is just roll this up and over and stick it down. And remember, if you've got your glue on there, but I would do opposite ends first. Always do opposite ends first. Now, here, I'm taking a bone folder. Now, can you see where it's just over the edge? So it's just taking that corner a bit further past. I'm going to use a bone folder. You can use a plastic ruler or the um, nib of a pen if you want to, and just push it in. I find sometimes using a pen lid works just as well. You can just push that in, push down, push it in. Push down, make sure you've got it on the edge, push it in. The bone folder works just as well, but if you haven't got a bone folder, use the edge of a ruler. Push down, and that does exactly the same job. You don't necessarily need a bone folder to do this. Okay, and then we're going to do the, these two sides now, and then just roll that over and stick it down and you should get a really nice kind of match there we go so that's going to be one of the covers either front or back it's up to you i'm just going to repeat that same process again on the other side so peel that paper Get my grunge board, drop it somewhere, kind of in the middle, so you've got that even board all the way around. Like that. Take my ruler. 
and then just snip off those corners. Right, you've seen me do it for once there, there's no need for you to watch me do it again. So I will carry on and do all four, fold it over and I'll be back when I've got my two covers made. So that's the second of the covers. So we now have front and back done. And you can obviously embellish the corners if you want to. You could add those metal protectors if you so wished, or grunge it up even further. You could go over it with distressing. The world is your oyster, as they say. Okay, so the glue from our block should theoretically be dry enough for us now to be able to work on. So I'm just going to take those clips off and show you the text block or the book block that we've created. So you should now have your first sheet and then your double thickness, so you should now have 10 in which to work in. And there's your outer. Okay, so the cloth. You're going to glue or add glue onto the back of the cloth, but first of all we want to add a bead of glue up the spine here. So take your PVA or whatever glue that you're using and just run a bead right the way down like so and then just smooth it with your finger. Now I find the white PVA works best for this. I'm just rub that off then. Take your cloth and then line it up with the top. And then just wrap it over. And just gently push the cloth down onto the spine with that glue and then you can take the rest of your glue you can either put it directly onto the cloth and then just roll it over and then just smooth it out and we just get your bone folder and just squidge a little doesn't matter whether you get any squeezing out from underneath it really doesn't matter at all I think you can just smear it back onto the front page if you want and then flip it over and then just repeat that process again. Like I said, you can add a, either just add it onto the paper if you want, or you can do it directly onto the cloth. It really doesn't matter, either way around. Just smooth that down. And then leave it to dry. If you want you can leave it to dry at that stage and come back to it a bit later on. You can if you want to stick these over the top first then leave it to dry. I like to do that later but that's just me. So I'm gonna leave this to dry for a little while like I said 
and then I'll be back in a bit. Okay, so it's had a few minutes in which to dry and as you can tell, the eagle-eyed amongst you can tell I've had time to slope off and make myself a cup of coffee. There you go. <laughs> yeah. Uh, <clears throat> but before I went downstairs, I did just stick on one of the yellow inter leaves. Now, I've actually stuck it directly down this time. Um, on my version, the one that I did myself, I left it loose by just sticking the edge on. On this one, I've stuck it down completely mainly because I'm never going to use, in the journal, I'm never actually going to ever use that page. It's just a waste, so I've actually stuck it down so that as soon as you open the journal you can start work. And that's just a nice page on the other side. So I'm just going to flip that over, grab my glue again, and I'm going to run a bead just like I did before, all the way down around the edge, over the top of the fabric, like so. And this glue is starting to run out. It's nearly empty, but in true TV style, I have a replacement one just waiting to go. So I'll add a little bit of glue over the top. Okay, and then take the final sheet and again, line that up with your spine. But if you wanted to, you could have actually stuck this down first and then put the fabric over the top. Again, it's just down to pure personal preference on how you want the journal to look. Just wipe that up, a little bit of excess glue up there. And then you've now got your two covers all your pages and your fabric spine. Now again, if you want to, you can just pop your clamps on just to hold it in place, just to give it a little bit of extra oomph while it's drying. And then once that's done, we'll be ready to attach our front and back covers. So that's now had around about 15 minutes or so just to kind of set and hold and if I just open the journal out now on the spine and show you it's going to fold in on itself and create a great um, spine for opening up and laying completely flat. Perfect and no matter where you open it on the journal it's pretty much going to stay completely flat. So we're ready now that our inner leaves are stuck down to attach the covers. So again, now oh, did I not pop that open? There we go. This is a brand new one. So let's just get that working. There we go. So I'm just going to add a bead of glue all the way around the outside. And just a little bit up the middle. Maybe a little bit too much there, but that's okay. Just we'll wipe that into there. A little bit more there. That will do us. And because this is just pure white paper, there is no back or front. And then we can just lay that down onto the front, line it up with the spine, and then you can just pop that open and give that a gentle push. So you've now got a beautiful yellow inside to your journal and then we just flip that over so let's just make sure we get it the right way around 
because now there is a front and a back. And again, get your glue. Your bead all the way down. Around the outside. And then just put a little bit into the centre. Make sure you get enough on the spine or towards the spine so that it'll hold. And then you can take your back piece and again just line that up. Give it a gentle squeeze, open it up and then just press down to make sure you get a good seal and you can if you want to at this point just take your bone folder and just give it a gentle rub. Again, it may help if you just clamp it together or lay a heavy book or something on top of it just to hold it while the glue sets. So it's been about 10 to 15 minutes since I clamped those boards onto the front and there you go. So there's the one that I did the other day, here's the one that we've created today. So all nice and flat, dry and pretty much ready to go. So wherever you open the journal up, that's going to lay flat, wherever you open the journal up, let's just do that, do that, it's going to lay flat and that's all down to that fabric on the spine because you've glued it down onto the edges of the paper it's going to fold itself inward to enable you to lay those down flat so i hope you've enjoyed um, watching how those little journals with the fabric spines um, are made you asked I delivered. <laughs> so I hope you did enjoy that. If you did, please give the video a thumbs up, share the video with your friends. And if you haven't subscribed to my YouTube channel already, you can do so by clicking the button at the end of the video. Um, this one, because I've now got an extra one, has already been begged by my friend Linda. So unfortunately, that's going to her <laughs> because I'm going to be using this one because it's got sunflowers on the front to use as my volume two of the dolls. So that's all from me for now. I'll see you all again very, very soon. Bye for now. I'd like to say a huge thank you to all of my angels because without you these videos would not be possible. Thank you.